Well, if you uh, needed a blueprint for how to beat a team, all you have to do is look at last year's game between the Sooners and Red Raiders. When OU trailed with halftime in Lubbock, some uh, game planning had to be done. Some changes had to be made, and so in the second half in that game at Lubbock, OU ran the ball and kept running it, and P. Ryan ran for over 200 yards. Why did Oklahoma keep running it? Because Texas Tech can't stop the run. And today, same thing. New defensive coordinator for Texas Tech. Pretty much the same team, except for the fact that Texas Tech's having a little more success this year in the win-loss total. 5-2 and two overall in the win at Arkansas, but they still can't stop the run. And today, Oklahoma proved uh, that, once again, um, you can stick with the blueprint plan from the year before and have the same result. How about over 400 yards rushing? Samaje P. Wright for the second straight time, well over 200 yards rushing, and Joe Mixon adding 154. The two backs combined for six rushing touchdowns, and a first half that had a little bit of intrigue because of because of sooner turnovers that Texas Tech capitalized with 14 points. Second half, though, for the most part, the Sooners dominated, winning the game 63-27 to move to 6-1 overall. Again, I said that the rushing game was going to be a big key, and I said that on the weekly matchup show. Don't be surprised if the Sooners run the ball quite a bit. Even though Oklahoma's offense has changed, it's now an air raid attack that Lincoln Riley has installed, meaning you're going to see more throwing than passing, but maybe not in this game. I said it earlier in the week, and it's no surprise. Look, you know, if, it's, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And if you know that the opposition has a weakness, you attack it, even if you're not really a running team like you used to be. Look, so much P. Ryan, because of this new offense, because it's a new offensive line that's not as experienced, he hasn't had the numbers, maybe the touches, and definitely not the touchdowns that he had a year ago. It doesn't mean that he's not effective, and it doesn't mean you don't utilize him if the opposition has a hard time stopping the run. Oklahoma kept it simple, and the offensive line had one hell of a game, opening up big holes, and not only P. Ryan getting the job done with over 200 yards rushing, but Joe Mixon, he, I tell you what, the, the guy has incredible footwork, very quick, but also strong for a guy of his size. He's not very big, but he's very hard to bring down. And today, over 150 yards rushing and a pair of scores. And for Baker Mayfield, Hey, you know what? Congratulations, man. I, and, and he might say or may deny that this game, um, you know, re revenge or he didn't want this one a little bit more. You know, he's lying to you. This was very, very big for Mayfield because the guy two years ago started at Texas Tech, started seven games, Big 12 Offensive Freshman of the Year. You know, and he did this as a walk-on, but the way things ended in Lubbock, not very pretty and didn't get to play last year. But got to play this year, got to play against the team that, you know, he, he played for for over half a season and did a heck of a job today. Yeah, he had, he had, a, he had an interception, a pass that he uh, definitely misread. But overall, a productive game for Mayfield. And the best part about today was that it didn't have to be the Baker Mayfield show. Okay, you didn't have to put uh, pressure on his shoulder for OU to win. He only threw the ball 22 times but got 15 completions, a pair of touchdowns and over 200 yards through the air. Today, it was about the offensive line taking it to Texas Tech, pounding them, opening holes, and just letting the ground game do the majority of the work. Okay, Mayfield played nice, but it was the offensive line that, to me, was the MVP of this game. They did one heck of a job, and again, the ground game got the job done. Defensively for Oklahoma, uh, for the most part, thought it was a good game. Now, you're going to be saying, now, wait a second, Texas Tech had over 400 you know, yards of total offense. They had just under 440. How can you say it was a good game? Well, when you play Texas Tech's offense, you know that they are going to get yardage. They're going to score points. They just have too much speed. They're too skilled and play a style of offense that's going to be productive, and they're, they're going to get points, okay? It's impossible to shut a team out like Texas Tech. But what you have to do against a team like Texas Tech, in my opinion, maybe treat it like tennis, okay? Maybe treat it like, you know, um, both teams hold serve. You get a touchdown, they get a touchdown, but hey, there might be a possession where you hold them to a field goal. Like, like the Sears did on that very first possession that Texas Tech got close to the goal line, okay? You know, it was fourth and goal, and Texas Tech had to settle for a field goal after an offensive pass interference penalty, and once the receiver picked an Oklahoma player, okay? That right there is kind of a victory because you hold them to three. An offense, that's good. You can hold them to a field goal, especially when they are breathing at the goal line or near it. 
you're doing pretty good. And to hold Texas Tech to 10 points in that second half, hey, that's like getting several break points in terms of tennis. Hey, you know, that's like winning a, a, a set six games to two or six games to three. In other words, you're going to give up points, but you're going to get even more points, and you're going to make sure the most important thing is that you get your share of stops. And today, you know, Pat Mahomes did not have one of his best days. He had 20 TD passes entering today. He had a mere uh, two today. And he had very few interceptions entering this game. He had four after this one. So terrific job again by Eric Stryker making an impact early in the game with that interception in which, you know, most passes like that are not picked, okay? There's usually too much steam on them, but Stryker got in the proper position to make the interception. And then we saw another interception late in the game in which we saw terrific outside pressure um, applied by that center front four leading to an interception by Alexander. Um, again, the Sooners forced the turnovers. They did bend, but I don't think really broke. And we got to remember, you know, Tech got those two takeaways in the second quarter and didn't exactly have to move the ball a great amount of field in order to score both TDs. I think both of those possessions because of interceptions started in Oklahoma Territory. So, you know, I think Tech might have had one drive, only one, I think that was in the third quarter, in which they drove the length of the field for a touchdown. So, overall, not a bad performance at all by uh, Dakota Austin, who got thrown right into the fire after the Zach Sanchez um, right leg injury from the very first play. Austin got thrown right into the fire. Did he give up some plays? Yeah. Did he give up a touchdown? Yeah. But he had a big play, in my opinion, right before halftime, when it was 28-17, to Texas Tech trailing, but driving, Looked like they were going to get at worst a field goal, maybe a touchdown. They came away with neither because Austin got ahead of the defender. They were going to go right to Austin's side, that right side, and Austin was able to pick the ball off in the end zone, and OU got out of that possession right there without giving up any points and kept their two-score lead and then would add to it from the first possession right after halftime with a touchdown. So I thought that was a very, big, big play moment in the game for the uh, Sooners. And again, Texas Tech didn't get any closer than 11 points after uh, halftime, that is. So for the Sooners, 6-1, and one, bowl eligible. Texas Tech drops to 5-3. and three. And for the Sooners, you get Kansas coming up next week. And if you're curious, the network and the game time uh, for OU Kansas has yet to be announced. We'll probably hear something on Sunday, October 25th um, about uh, the network and the kickoff time uh, from Lawrence, Kansas, of the Sooners and Jayhawks. Speaking of the Jayhawks, well, it's been a winless season. They were huge underdogs in Stillwater against Oklahoma State, and there's a reason, because Kansas just isn't a good team. It's just that simple to say. They get uh, routed today in Stillwater by Oklahoma State. Cowboys remain undefeated, and Kansas remains winless. Speaking of Oklahoma State, closing out the show today, um, thoughts, prayers, um, condolences going out to the Oklahoma State family. Uh, as you know, um, an unspeakable tragedy occurring at their homecoming parade. A, a female driver, 25 years old, uh, plows into a crowd of people um, at the parade. Um, at least four people uh, lost their lives, including a two-year-old. And um, the driver was arrested, um, DUI, in jail. And even though I'm not a lawyer, I'd probably say that person is going to be in jail for a very, very long time. Again, Thoughts, prayers to the uh, families of those victims, um, and also to those families of those who were injured um, in in today's event. Again, heart goes out to um, Stillwater, to Oklahoma State, uh, dealing with an unspeakable tragedy. Wrapping up the show, final score again, the uh, Sooners, for the most part, dominant, 63 points. Another dominant performance by Oklahoma, 63-27 over Texas Tech, their fourth their fourth straight win over the guys from Lubbock. Sooners and Jayhawks from Lawrence on some network at some time next Saturday. We should know something pretty soon. And don't forget my weekly matchup show of OU and Kansas. It'll probably be on Tuesday. Thanks for watching, and Boomer Sooner.